So here we have the Panasonic T8 A24 Advanced Hybrid System, one of the more popular um, home private branch exchange systems that Panasonic makes. And it supports three trunk lines to begin with, plus eight extensions. So let's open it up here. So here I've lifted off the top cover and um, basically what I just said, you have three trunk lines here numbered CO1, CO2, CO3, and eight extensions here. It is expandable, um, but it provides um, eight extensions for analog phones to begin with. Um, I certainly won't be needing more than that here, but let's boot it up and test it out and see how it works. So I got the PBX hooked up now. Um, you can see it's on the floor there. I got three phones hooked up to it. And let's test the phones out. So here we have four telephones. Um, the one in the top right, that one isn't hooked up because I only have um, three phone cords and I have four telephones. So do the math, I can only use three of these at any given time. But I have these three phones hooked up two phones on the bottom and the rotary phone on the top. So why not take them for a test drive now that I have them hooked up to this PBX. This phone is extension 101, this phone is extension 102, and this phone is extension 103. There are obviously eight extensions on the PBX like I said before, so I could hook up five more phones to the PBX can't hook up that one because I don't have a cord, but I could if I had a cord and I had more phones. You'll also notice here I have zero written down here because this also functions as the operator console. So um, you can have an operator on this PBX console, so if someone calls zero within this PBX system, it'll go to phone 101. This phone has two options for dialing, touch tone and dial pulse, and it's currently set to dial pulse. You'll also see that I have the ringer turned off on this phone. I also have it turned off on this phone. So first let's touch test it on touch tone. We got dial tone. And it rings. So now let's test it with dial pulse. This emulates the pulses from a rotary telephone, like this one here. If you listen carefully, you can hear the pulses being sent. Now let's dial this phone from this phone. And again, it's pretty straightforward. Got dial tone. And you can hear ring. Now let's notice. When you hear it ringing, you also hear clicking noises from the PBX. It's actually sending out the current for the ringing signal. So I'll hang up now. This phone here is a personal favorite of mine. Um, out of all four of these phones, I've had this one the longest. And I actually prefer rotary telephones to touchstone telephones. Anyway. This is quite a nice phone. It's got a loud handset. It's actually got a volume control on here, so you can make it quieter. And we can make it louder. We got the fast busy again. So let's call this phone from this phone. So we're just going to dial 101. And we got that phone ringing. Now 
Now, I'm going to make a call using the switch hook. Now, switch hook dialing isn't specific to rotary telephones. You can do it with any telephone, any corded telephone. Um, but I'm just going to take this opportunity here to show you. And how switch hook dialing works is basically when you depress the switch hook, it's it's basically doing the same thing as when you spin the dial. It's, it's sending a pulse over the telephone line. And I'll show you what I mean here, and then you'll get it. So, got dial tone. Now, keep in mind, we just dial this phone by, by using dial, right? And it works, right? So, now let's use it. Well, now let's make the call using the switch hook. That's this thing here, by the way. This is the switch hook, the thing the handset rests on. And there it is. So you might be asking, you just jiggle switch hook a bunch of times and, and you made a call. And how does that work? Each time you press the switch hook in quick succession corresponds to the number of pulses that would be sent using the dial. So this is the same as one, two for two. And obviously when I dialed 101, I did one quick depress of the switch hook, then 10, then one. That's how that worked. So we have this one over here. Now this phone, actually, um, the dial pad on it doesn't work. So um, it still rings, the ringer works, the bells are working. Um, you still can get a dial tone on this. Um, it's got this little tone pulse conversion thing here, you'll see. And you can't use the tone function because the buttons don't work. And you can't use the pulse button. Oops, I guess I didn't hang up properly. There we go. But you can use a switch hook like I just demonstrated to make a call. So let me just switch the line in here to this phone because remember I only have three phone lines. So I got the cord here with the telephones. And I'll just plug it into this phone here. And it's not in all the way. There we go. And I lost it again. There we go. You can hear the dial tone. But you'll notice buttons do not work. Nothing is happening. So you might say, well, gosh, this phone is completely useless then, right? You can't even make any calls with it. Well, let me tell you, first of all, you can receive calls with it. Second of all, you can still make calls using the switch hook, remember? So it really doesn't matter which setting you got this set to. That's just for the buttons, and the buttons don't work, remember? But you can still use a switch hook. So. Um, let's just dial this one here, 101. And the switch hook on this is a little finicky. So it might take some a couple tries to get it right. Remember, we're going to do one quickly, then 10, then one more. And sure enough, it works. Is it practical to use a switch hook for dialing all your calls? Probably not. But this just goes to show that you can use a switch hook to make calls. You don't need to use the buttons or the dial. You can use a switch hook. So now how about we make a call and we transfer. So I'll call this phone down here from this phone. So that's just 101. Actually, how about I dial zero for the operator this time? Oops. I've still got the cord on this phone. Better change it back. And we got dial tone. Let's just dial zero for the operator. And sure enough, we get through here. So let's say I'm on this phone, on this call right now. I want to transfer this call, let's say, to this phone here. 
So I'm going to hit the transfer button. I don't know if you can see it's this button right here. You get old tone and I'll forward it to this phone here. I'll just dial 102. And now it is ringing this phone. So I can hang up this phone now because I've transferred the call and pick up this receiver. And I've got a call connected between this phone and this phone. Now remember, I originally dialed from this phone to this phone. So remember when I said I turned the ringers off on these phones? Obviously, you can't turn the ringers off on these phones, but I turned them off on these phones. So let me turn them back on so you can just hear what they sound like. Turn this one to its low setting. Turn this one also to its low setting. And let me just make a call from this phone to this phone. You got dial tone. Remember, it's on the dial pulse setting right now. That's why you hear all those pulse noises. And must have dialed the wrong number. I think it dialed 102. There we go. So you can hear that ringing now. And enough of that. And I can dial this phone from this phone. And enough of that. Now, how about these phones up here? Remember I told you the ringers on these both work. These phones both have real bells. Obviously these phones have electronic numbers. These phones both have real bells. And in my opinion, phones with real bells are much, much better. And those phones, I'm not even sure if they're being made these days, but these phones you can hear from um, anywhere in the house. Super loud ringers, ringers they'll, they'll easily wake someone up from across the house um, really loud. So if you've never heard one of these ring before, you might be in for a surprise. So let me just dial this phone from this phone. Again, it's 103, and I'll change it back to touch tone. And there we go. As you can hear, it's pretty loud, right? And you can make a call to this phone. I'll just switch the line again. And you got dial tone, so you know it's functioning. So now let's dial. We're, we're still going to dial 103. Remember, it's it's hooked up to the, the line, not the telephone. So it's it's the same number. And why not use this phone? I could use any phone, of course. And we'll dial 103. Oh, That's that phone. So, you can't use the dial pad, but it still rings. You can still have a conversation with it. set up that we will use to show how a call progresses through a five-digit step-by-step office. It is composed of five devices called switches. When the calling customer raises the receiver, a circuit is closed, starting the first switch which is called the line finder. We'll do it again in a moment. Watch the line finder hunt the calling line. 
Also watch the contacts of the line finder shaft, which we call wipers. Step in to connect with the calling numbers terminal. Now see it happen. The line finder is connected permanently to a first selector, which returns dial tone to the calling customer to tell him that the equipment is ready to receive the first digit. For this demonstration, we will dial the number 35286. The circuit is connected to contacts controlled by the telephone dial. As the dial is moved off normal for the digit 3, no action takes place in the first selector. But as the dial returns to normal, the selector will respond to the dial pulses. It stepped up to the third level, and by rotary action, cut in automatically to select an idle circuit to the next selector. This is the second selector. This switch will operate when the second digit is dialed. The next digit is five. Again, nothing happens as the dial is rotated to the finger stop. But watch the second selector as the dial returns to normal. It stepped up to the fifth level as it responded to the second train of dial pulses and cut in automatically. The second selector extends the circuit to the third selector. This selector operates in the same manner when the next digit, digit two, is dialed. The selector stepped up to the second level as the dial returned and cut in. The third selector extends the circuit to the connector switch. The connector operates somewhat differently from the selectors, as we shall see when we dial the first of the last two digits. The next digit to be dialed is eight. As the dial is moved to the finger stop, no action takes place in the connector. But when the finger is removed, the connector will respond to the dial pulses and step up to the eighth level. Notice, however, that it did not cut in. This is because it is now necessary to select the called party's terminal in the connector bank. The equipment waits for the final digit to be dialed. The fifth and last digit in this demonstration is six. As the dial returns to normal, the connector rotates to the sixth terminal. The connector now sends ringing current out on the called line until the receiver is raised. Now let's watch another call as it progresses step by step through the demonstration equipment. If the number this subscriber is calling is in use, the connector will recognize the busy condition and will return busy tone to the calling customer.